ESCO, I presented, um, according to all the uh, co-investigators, the first in human study of J&J 5322, a novel next generation tricyclic antibody in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. And I showed the uh, initial phase one results. So J&J 5322 is a uh, interesting uh, novel um, uh, tricyclic antibody that binds simultaneously to BCMA and GPRC5D on the myeloma cell surface and also to CD3 on T cells. It has uh, enhanced binding to myeloma cells that express both BCMA and GPRC5D and that translates into increased efficacy compared to uh, bicyclic antibodies, at least in vitro. It can also kill myeloma cells that only express BCMA or only express GBRC5D and thereby can prevent potentially antigen escape. And the CD3 binding domain is also new and is associated with the manageable CRS profile with only one step of those needed. So initially uh, we enrolled um, a lot of patients um, uh, in this study to evaluate the recommended phase two dose. We evaluated different doses of the drug. We evaluated different administration intervals. And there were also some cohorts where we try to optimize for our patient dosing. And based on all the data on efficacy, safety, and pharmacokinetic profile, the recommended phase two dose was identified as 100 milligrams of the tricyclic every four weeks with only one step up dose of five milligrams. Importantly, the maximum tolerated dose was not reached. Here you can see the baseline characteristics. Patients uh, had a median age of approximately 65 years, approximately 10% had extra medullary plasmacytomas, one third had high risk site genetics, and uh, uh, patients had a median of four prior lines of therapy. All patients in this study had to be triple class exposed, so 100% of the patients was triple class exposed. Half of the patients was triple class refractory and pentadrug, refra and pentadrug exposure was seen in 50% of the patients. We wanted to test this uh, tricyclic antibody in a patient population um, that was also used for the development of the bicyclics because we want to see whether the tricyclic is better than bicyclics. So most of the patients were BCMA and GPRC5D therapy naive, and 25% of the patients was exposed previously to either BCMA or GPRC5D targeted therapies. In this uh, table, you see the uh, uh, overview of all the different uh, adverse events. As with other T-cell immunotherapies, we see, especially in the first one or two cycles, uh, lymphopenia and neutropenia, but these were easily manageable. And here you can also see that uh, the most common non-hematologic treatment emergent adverse events were infections and uh, GPRC5D related oral adverse events. So let's look into uh, somewhat more detail into these non-hematologic adverse events. Well, here you see that cytokine release syndrome in the absence of prophylactic TOSI occurred in 69% of the patients, and most of these events were either grade one or grade two. And with prophylactic tocilizumab, the CRS rate was significantly lower at 20%, and all the events were grade one, um, all CRS cases recovered or resolved with the appropriate supportive care measures. Infections occurred in uh, uh, approximately 80% of the patients treated at the RP2D and 33% of the patients had grade three or higher infections. And across all doses, we see a similar rate of any grade and grade three or higher events. Hypogamma globulinemia is a contributing factor for infections, and this was observed in 50 to 60% of the patients and could, of course, be managed with IVIG treatment. Oral adverse events were uh, typically milder than what we see with talquitamab um, and also of shorter duration than what we see with uh, talquitamab. Dysphagia was uh, not observed at all at the RP2D, while other uh, adverse events like glossitis and stomatitis were rare. 
This milder uh, oral treatment emergent adverse event profile is also reflected in the fact that only 6% of patients treated at the RP2D experienced weight loss, which was very transient in character. And there were no grade three events of weight loss or higher. The PK profile can be seen in this figure. Exposure increased in an approximately dose proportional manner across all doses. And at the RP2D, the mean serum concentration was maintained above the mean EC90. So here you see the uh, response rate um, in the different uh, uh, cohorts um, in which we enrolled patients. On the right, you can see that uh, the uh, response rate was 55% in patients that were previously BCMA and GPRC5D exposed. The response rate was higher in patients that were tr treated at the RP2D and were BCMA and GPRC5 naive. Here, the response rate is 100% with a, a CR rate of 70%. And this is higher than what we see in BCMA and GPRC5D naive patients treated with 50 milligrams of the tricyclic every four weeks, and quite comparable to what we see at the 300 milligrams every four weeks dosing. The follow-up, however, of the 100 milligram cohort is a bit lower than in the 300 milligram cohort, and we expect that some of the VGPRs and PRs will still deepen into complete remissions. In these waterfall plots, you can see that responses were induced very rapidly and uh, deepened over time and uh, almost all patients remain in response with 12 months of follow-up. Then let's look into what somewhat more detail into the patients treated at the RP2D and were BCMA and GPRC5D naive. There was only one discontinuation at the RP2D and that patient died while in VGPR of a pneumonia and there were no progression or other discontinuations at the RP2D to date. And on the right, you can see the Kaplan-Meier curve with for the BCMA and GPRC5D naive patients treated at the RP2D, a PFS at one year of 95%. And this was 74% for all 118 BCMA and GPRC5D naive patients treated across all different doses. In conclusion, I showed you that J&J 5322, 100 milligrams every, toe week, every four weeks with one step up dose of five milligram was selected as the RP2D. J&J 5322 appear to have an improved or similar safety profile compared with bispecific antibodies targeting BCMA or GPRC5D. Grade three or higher infections occurred in 28% of patients. There was improved rash and oral treatment emergent adverse event profile with minimal to no weight loss. And CRS events were typically low grade with only one step up dose and prophylactic TOSI data support option for outpatient dosing. The overall response rate at the RP2D in patients naive to BCMA and GPRC5D was 100% with a CR rate of 70%. And at a median follow-up of 12 months, almost all patients naive to BCMA and GPRC5D treated at the RP2D remain in response. And the 12-month PFS of 90 5% uh, at the RP2D was seen in BCMA and GPRC5D naive patients. So J&J 5322, a BCMA and GPRC5D T-cell engaging tricyclic antibody demonstrated a manageable safety profile and an overall response rate comparable to CAR-T with convenient off-the-shelf every four weeks dosing with one step of dose to facilitate outpatient dosing. 